Hey gang, welcome back, and today I am going to be going through some cartoons from the Jehovah Witnesses. Also, brief explanation, my in-ear monitors need new earbuds, that's why I'm wired up like a friggin' Android. They should be here tomorrow. Today you get oversized headphones and a man bun. And by the way, I've seen some of your comments, I like my man bun. Alright, enough of that, let's do this. So obviously most people watching aren't going to be Jehovah's Witnesses, but I actually think it's still important to show you these videos. On some of the cringier videos so far, I've gotten a lot of comments that are like, yeah, well, these particular Christians, this kind of Christian, sure, they're crazy, but uh, it, that doesn't represent the rest of us. I actually think it's important to show you some of the more extreme examples so you can actually kind of go through and filter and realize that a lot of these things, a lot of these concepts are concepts I've heard in regular good old church, and I'm just doing mental gymnastics to get around them. Them. I'm only going to show you two of these cartoons. They're really short, but I think you're going to see a lot in them. The first one's actually pretty mild, but the second one, oh my, you might throw up. Good afternoon, shoppers. Stop by our bakery for today's specials. Come on, Caleb. Time to check out. By the way, this isn't important, but I do already feel for this imaginary kid. I was always so bored when I had to go to the grocery store with my mom. <laughs> No candy today. No candy? Also another weird note, I wonder why this is so often the oversized spiral lollipop is like the height of candy. If you steal, will you be Jehovah's friend? So we've already started a theme that I want to now point out to make sure you're picking up on it. And again, these videos are really short, so it won't take much. Jehovah's Witnesses show how you can turn Christianity into a cult. Now, I come from Mormonism. They're no better. But as you watch this, and especially if you're a Christian watching this, notice the way they put in the word Jehovah, and they make it a very real figure, and they make it this person that you need to be working for, and how because it's not your typical God or Jesus, it seems a lot more creepy. Now, obviously, Jehovah does actually represent God or Jesus, but I just mean it not being that same typical name. Let me pull a girl to find here. And I challenge you every time you hear Jehovah to just switch it to like a normal name, like George or something. Let's try this through the filter of George. Do you think you're going to be George's friend? Do you want to be Jehovah's friend? Do you want to be George's friend? And by the way, that's a ridiculous line of reasoning. You can teach children not to steal for unimaginary friend emotional blackmail reasons. I don't steal because I don't want to be stolen from. I have a brain capable of empathy and understanding. I also have those values that come with wanting to earn things. None of that rooted in this, do you want to be friends with George? Let's go, honey. Like I said, super, super short cartoon. That one's pretty mild. They basically went the Santa route, except they never drop it. If you steal, you're not going to get any presents. But by going with George in this case, sorry, Jehovah, I mix up imaginary characters. It's a lasting existential guilt that absolutely is still there in adulthood. All right, we're gonna do one more of their videos here. This one is gross. Oh no, it's Barla. Caleb. We need someone to save K us. Caleb. Sparlock can activate Caleb. your magic, Sparlock. Hi. How was school today? Fine. Look at Sparlock's magic cape. Caleb. This is also the fun thing when you're looking in at cult videos. If you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this right now, you've already gone, oh no, that poor child, a bunch of times. And yet, if you're not familiar with this religion, you probably don't think they've set up the conflict at all yet. They have. What? toy is that? It's Sparlock, the warrior wizard. Whoa, a warrior wizard. I can only assume that every time you tell a child a lie, your neck grows a little longer. Yeah, my friend gave it to me. All the kids are going to see the movie. Can I see it too? Oh, your friend gave this to you. Look at that look on her face. This is that worldliness thing. Oh, of course, your garbage piece of shit friend. Oh, yes, I see. Now it all makes sense, you worldly piece of shit, you little boy. Hmm, you look pretty excited about this. Why don't you come over here and get your snack, okay?
Is this toy magical? Mm -hmm. I mean, it literally isn't. The toy itself that has no magical qualities. Caleb, who likes magic? Jehovah or Satan? Satan. Also me, I happen to love magic. Right. Magic is bad. That's why Jehovah hates it. Jehovah hates magic. Okay, listen, if Jehovah hates Chris Angel, that I get. That dude's full of shit. I know this might not seem as big a deal to you as it does to me, but this was also part of things I had to get over to escape Mormonism. It's not just that this God exists and he has all these powers or he is the supreme ruler of the universe. It's the concept of all of this stuff around me, while obviously I see a lot of things that are the results of engineering and science, there could be actual black magic around me. And I grew up thinking magic was a real actual thing. In Mormonism you hear stories about people who in the past and in the Book of Mormon used black magic. Now luckily as a Mormon I was still allowed to read Harry Potter. Jehovah's Witnesses I understand cannot. As though enjoying that fantasy world is really going to get you your letter to Hogwarts and you're really going to perform a drive-by Avada Kedavra one day. It seems like originally it would have literally been if you felt like a person was summoning demons or being a necromancer. And now it's even card tricks. And I got news for you. Card tricks are fucking amazing. Amazing. Oh yeah, by the way, I used to be a magician. Oh well, now it all makes sense! Alright, tell us how Sky Daddy hates magic. Do you really want to play with something that Jehovah hates? Do you remember who we learned about at family worship? Who is this? Adam and Eve. Damn, if Adam and Eve were real and they saw this, don't you think they'd be like, you couldn't find a little more flattering portrait of us? But also I want to point out that really sad look that was on the boy's face. Is it possible that part of why he is sad is because while he knew that lesson, this didn't flag right away because it seems so ridiculously far from whatever the problem with magic is? Also, Seven of Clubs, favorite card. Right. Did they obey Jehovah? No, they disobeyed Jehovah. And he got very sad. I know it's a cartoon, but I'm invested and I feel so bad for this imaginary kid who clearly is going through an emotional problem because he was being happy and now he's learning how evil he was for, for being... And by the way, don't get me wrong. There are people who are evil for the things that make them happy. But this kind of thing where it's like, hey, you know how you were just having fun and it started with an act of charity as your friend just gave you this and you were so excited? Nah, you're a little piece of shit. And Sky Daddy is very sad. So what if you disobey Jehovah? and play with toys he doesn't like. So what if you disobey George and play with toys he doesn't like? Do you think Jehovah will be happy or sad? Do you think George will be happy? I'm starting to imagine it's George Costanza. Sad. Yeah. Do you want Jehovah to be sad? No! This is gross. It's not just trying to program kids to those things that make them feel good. It's also trying to program kids to things that should make them feel bad. This is a problem with religions. It is taking things that aren't a big deal or that are a part of your very nature and making you feel like a piece of shit for them with no real good justification for why you should. This imaginary kid here, as he starts to grow up, I hope he doesn't start to like an imaginary boy. As mild seeming as it might be about this wizard toy, this is ultimately why gay kids are killing themselves. I don't want Jehovah to be sad with me. No, I don't want Jehovah to be sad with you either. So what do you think you should do with this toy? Oh, I'm so glad we agree. I don't want George to be mad at you either. I know he's a child, but I also know from a very young age, I was so tired of being patronized. I don't actually deserve a real explanation. And I don't think to be successful parents, you have to lie and scapegoat everything because you're intellectually lazy. Caleb, I am so proud of you. She is so proud of him for throwing it away. He was given that as a gift. Give it back to the fucking kid, first of all, but that would be giving that kid more witchcraft and magicry to play with. Magicry is not a word and I'm ashamed of myself. But it's kind of a good metaphor. Imagine instead that the little boy represents a Jehovah's Witness family and that the wizard represents a kid who realizes he doesn't really believe in it because that family will throw him in the trash. Oh, that loving George, Jehovah, damn it. You made mommy very happy. And you know who else is happy? George! Yes! Jehovah loves you very much for obeying him, Caleb. <gasps> hey, you know what I want to do? What? I want to go ride bikes! Yay! Let's go! So yeah, clear culty vibes. 
But this isn't out of the ordinary. You and I know the Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult, and you and I know that that is problematic. And I'm sure someone in the comments is going to ask what my feelings on Santa Claus are. And actually, they're rather conflicted. I get it. I don't see it as doing any harm in my life. It is nice that we eventually tell the children that it was a whole fiction story. The subject is this childhood indoctrination. Don't feel bad for stealing because you stole from someone. Take the humans out of the equation and don't forget about good old Sky Daddy George. And these videos are probably so short because they have to cut out all the rest of the part. And what happens when you make Jehovah sad? He makes sure you're tortured forever and ever. So is it that you don't want to make him sad because you love him? No, for very selfish reasons. I don't want to be tortured forever and ever. I love George. I love not being burned. So if you're a religious person watching, I see you in the comments. I try to read as many comments as I can. I get it. It's fun. It's entertaining. We have fun laughing at these kinds of things, but it's not enough just to laugh. These are religious principles and they are not at all different than being good to go to heaven or avoiding being evil to go to hell. It's just reworded and it's strange because they're saying Jehovah or I'm saying George. Be a better human for the sake of humanity. Leave the threats from Sky Daddy out of it. Thank you again all so much for watching. I do have something new for you. I've added this shirt to the merch shop. Land Daddy in the streets, Sky Daddy in the sheets. There's also a coupon code if you want 10% off anything in the store. I'm trying to remember what it is. It's Bethany. Ah, oh, that's right. If you use the code Bethany, you will get 10% off. Follow me on Twitter at Dear Mr. Atheist as well as on Twitch, which I should be getting back to soon. Check out the secret link of the day below for another creator that I adore and let him know I sent you. And here are a couple of video suggestions for you. One from me, one from the algorithm, and these are all my wonderful patrons who invest in the channel. I appreciate so much what you do for me, and today's patron of the day is once again SR Foxley. More like SR Foxy. Thank you all for watching. I'm Jimmy. Mr. Atheist wasn't my father. I wish I knew how to quit you.